Why did Jensen Huang wear a Tang suit? NVIDIA stock breaks $4 trillion, but should China be wary? Jensen Huang's face change and the covert chip war. On July 16th, at the Beijing Supply Chain Expo, Jensen Huang shed his iconic leather jacket and donned a Chinese-style Tang suit with a stand-up collar. With a slight accent, he remarked in Chinese, the development of China's supply chain is nothing short of a miracle. This face change by the legendary Silicon Valley CEO instantly made the audience realize, NVIDIA was truly anxious this time. Just the day before, NVIDIA announced that the U.S. government had approved the return of H20 chips to the Chinese market. This AI chip, specifically designed for China, had previously cost NVIDIA $13.5 billion in losses over two quarters due to a ban in April. Now, behind Jensen Huang's Tang suit lies a $50 billion computing power game, Chinese AI companies are furiously submitting orders, even prompting a whitelist rush buying system. Even more dramatically, AMD swiftly followed suit, announcing the restart of MI308 chip exports. This AI accelerator, equipped with 192GB HBM3 memory, directly rivals the H20 in performance. The simultaneous bowing of these two giants underscores the immense pull of the Chinese AI market. In 2025, China's computing power demand is projected to account for 35% of the global total, far exceeding the combined demand of Europe and America. Behind this chip war are the vastly different strategic choices of Western countries, and even more so, a life and death race under China's domestic substitution wave. Next, we will uncover the truth of this global tech covert war from three dimensions, policy maneuvering, technological positioning, and market shifts. I a policy maneuvering, America's boiling the frog slowly versus Europe's bold bet. Comparison of Europe and America The U.S. Commerce Department's face change is a textbook operation, banning H-20 sales in April, then approving exports in July, citing China's equivalent substitution capabilities. This precise cutting strategy is essentially about exchanging lower-end chips for market share while blocking high-end technology. As Jean Chiron, dean of the Deep Tech Research Institute, pointed out, the H-20 unbanning is a compromise between commercial interests and technological suppression. In contrast, Europe is attempting to reshape its AI ecosystem with a bold bet. The EU has launched the €200 billion Euros Invest AI plan, building 13 AI superfactories in Poland, Germany, and other locations, each equipped with 100,000 advanced chips, aiming directly at trillion-parameter large model training. This national team model seeks to strike a balance between data privacy and technological sovereignty, but conflicts of interest among member states make the plan's progress difficult. America's policy wavering exposes its contradictory wanting to have its cake and eat it too mentality. It wants to profit from the Chinese market but fears technology leakage. From frequent adjustments to the entity list for semiconductor equipment export controls to the 100-day review mechanism restricting U.S. enterprise investment in China, Washington repeatedly oscillates between containment and cooperation. This boiling the frog slowly strategy may temporarily delay China's domestic substitution process by precisely controlling the export pace of advanced process equipment, forcing Chinese enterprises to face the risk of equipment supply disruption during technology upgrades. But in the long run, it will instead force China to accelerate breakthroughs in bottleneck areas like EDA tools and advanced packaging. For instance, in 2023, the market share of local Chinese enterprises in the analog circuit design tool market jumped from less than 5% to 18%, demonstrating industrial resilience under external pressure. Meanwhile, Europe's super factory plan, though ambitious, faces challenges like dispersed funding and inconsistent technological pathways. Although the EU's CHIPS Act promises €43 billion Euros in investment, 
Member states are squabbling over subsidy allocation and process route selection. Germany's push for a 2 nanometers R&D project and France's focus on compound semiconductors are difficult to reconcile, and coupled with the lack of a complete industrial chain, the plan might ultimately become a politically correct facade. The recent stagnation of ST Microelectronics' 3 billion euro investment plan in Italy due to local environmental disputes is a microcosm of this dilemma. 2. Technological positioning H20's crippleware and domestic chips cornerstone overtake. The return of H20 seemingly offers a lifeline but is fraught with hidden implications. This hopper architecture-based chip has FP16 computing power of only 15% of the H100, but thanks to 96 GB HBM3 memory and CoOS packaging technology, it performs exceptionally well in large model inference scenarios. NVIDIA even customized a whitelist system for it, requiring Chinese enterprises to pledge not to use it for military purposes. In contrast, Domestic chips are breaking through with asymmetric innovation. Huawei's Ascend 920, using the Da Vinci architecture, surpasses H20 in energy efficiency. More threads MTTS80 achieves breakthroughs in graphics rendering through chiplet technology. More critically, domestic chips have built an independent ecosystem. Cambricon CUN 6B chip is compatible with CUDA and Baidu's Wenxin Yen has achieved a 30% improvement in training efficiency on Ascend clusters. From the perspective of international public opinion, the U.S. encirclement of China's chip industry has sparked widespread global discussion. Western media often frame the chip war around technological security, presenting it as a necessary measure to maintain global supply chain stability thereby concealing its strategic intention to contain China's technological rise. Chinese public opinion, however, emphasizes this as a typical act of technological hegemonism, exposing the essence of U.S. abuse of export control tools and disruption of fair competition in the market. Industry experts widely point out that while U.S. sanctions have caused short-term pain for Chinese chip companies in the long run, they have accelerated the domestic substitution process. For example, after ASML ceased EUV lithography machine supply, China made breakthroughs in DUV lithography machine technology, achieving mass production of domestic 14 nanometers chips, confirming that pressure breeds innovation adage. Meanwhile, data from the International Semiconductor Industry Association (SEMI) shows that in 2023, Local semiconductor equipment procurement in China increased by 30% year-on-year, indicating that global supply chain participants are using market choice to vote against U.S. unilateral policies. Geopolitical scholars further analyze that the chip war is essentially a microcosm of the Sino-U.S. strategic game, with its impact extending beyond the techno-economic sphere. The U.S. seeks to reconstruct the global semiconductor supply chain by building a chip alliance, e.g., U.S. Japan Netherlands Agreement, Quad Security Dialogue Mechanism, while China has formed a national system plus market driven response mode through policies like the Integrated Circuit Industry Promotion Law. This dynamic interplay of confrontation and countermeasures is reshaping the global technological competition landscape in the 21st century. NVIDIA's crippleware is essentially using sufficient but not advanced technology to lock down the Chinese market. But they underestimated the creativity of Chinese engineers. With engineering optimization technologies like strengthening computing power with networks, the actual computing power of domestic chip clusters is no weaker than H20. More importantly, Chinese developers are rebuilding AI technical standards through open source communities, e.g., DeepSeek, Minimax, and this ecosystem breakout is more disruptive than simply pursuing performance. Three market shifts, H20's brief resurgence and the irreversible domestic substitution.
On the first day of H20's return, spot prices in Huaqiang by bucked the trend and rose by 10%, with a server package featuring 8 cards quoted over 1 million renminbi. But this frenzy hides a false prosperity. Trendforce predicts that in 2025, China's proportion of externally purchased AI chips will rebound to 49%, but the share of domestic chips will simultaneously rise to 40%, forming a split pattern. Even more noteworthy, major companies like Alibaba and Tencent have quietly initiated dual-track procurement, ordering H20 for immediate needs while accelerating the deployment of domestic solutions like Ascend in Cambricon. The European market, however, presents a different picture. Industrial giants like Siemens and Bosch are deeply embedding AI into their production lines. BMW factories use NVIDIA Omniverse to simulate digital twins, and Mercedes-Benz tests humanoid robot collaboration. This industrial AI path contrasts sharply with China's consumer internet plus AI. But Europe's weakness lies in its excessive reliance on U.S. technology for its AI ecosystem, with almost no local chip companies. From a geopolitical perspective, the U.S. encirclement of China's semiconductor industry is essentially a continuation of its technological hegemony mindset. Washington is building a small yard, high fence through the Chips and Science Act, uniting allies to form the Chip for Alliance extending technology blockade from high-end chips to semiconductor equipment, materials, and talent, revealing its strategic anxiety to maintain global technological dominance. China's domestic substitution strategy, however, has shown strong resilience, with breakthroughs in Yangtze memory technologies 3D NAND Flash and Huawei's Kirin chips, confirming the potential of the national system plus market-driven innovation model. In the international public opinion arena, Western media largely interpret this as a zero-sum game, but emerging markets like ASEAN and the Middle East are more focused on the win-win opportunities brought by technological cooperation. The ultimate direction of this chip war will not only concern the comparison of technological strength between China and the US but will also reshape the global semiconductor industry's supply chain landscape and the discourse power over technology standards. The strong sales of H20 are merely a brief resurgence in the wave of domestic substitution. When Huawei's Ascend 920 achieved 80% of a 100s performance in actual testing at the National Supercomputing Center, and when MoreThread's IPO application on the star market was accepted, China's chip industry has entered a quantitative to qualitative change critical point. And while Europe's industrial AI is solid, without independent computing power support, it may ultimately become a colony of US technology. Under the spotlight of the Shanghai Chain Expo, Jensen Huang's 20-minute speech, delivered in fluent Chinese, was interwoven with complex signal codes. When he mentioned that NVIDIA is willing to build an ecosystem with Chinese partners, the capital market immediately reacted subtly, NVIDIA's stock edged up 0.7% that day, while domestic GPU concept stocks like Cambricon collectively fell by 5%. This dramatic linkage mirrors the current Sino-US tech competition, against the backdrop of NVIDIA's market capitalization breaking $4 trillion and ranking among the top three global companies, the H20 chip, briefly unbanned by the US. Commerce Department and the new MI308 accelerator card are re-entering Chinese data centers through special channels. Behind this seemingly open technological return lies the strategic calculation of the U.S. chip industry, using technological penetration to delay the formation of China's independent computing power system. Standing at the critical juncture of an explosive growth in the AI industry, the global computing power landscape is undergoing changes unseen in a century. The computing power base behind ChatGPT consumes the equivalent of 53 Gorges Dam's annual power generation, and 90% of global AI computing power is still controlled by NVIDIA's GPU architecture. 
This silent chip war has long proven that from the Tianhe supercomputer to the Pangda large model in Pengchang Lab, only by achieving full-chain independent control of GPU architecture design, EDA tools, and advanced processes can one truly hold the golden key of technological discourse power in the AI era. Follow us for the latest developments in domestic chips and witness how China breaks through in this chip war. Do you think the return of H20 will delay the process of domestic substitution? Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments section.